They come to the top of the stretch. It is Arrowgate and Mike Smith. Oh, they've opened up a five, a six-length lead here with one furlong to run. They've left the field reeling behind. American Freedom and Gunrunner are fired behind Arrowgate. What a commanding performance. He won the Travers by 12. This is Saratoga Track and Ultra Larry Colmas, and you're listening to the Paddock Pass on 104.5 The Team. <laughs> One zero four five, the team, and one zero four five, the team. dot com, the Paddock Pass. Happy to be joined by TVG's Simon Braze joining us from the Del Mar Thoroughbred Club in Del Mar, California. Simon, I know you guys just opened up your season out there, but it's Christmas Day here in Saratoga Springs with the first race starting Friday at 1 o'clock. So myself and the listeners in the 518 need your help to help us pick some winners so there's no pressure. All right, man? Uh, yeah, absolutely no pressure at all. I mean, it, it's every year. I'm looking forward to Saratoga, but every year it provides some of the best betting opportunities, I think, in the country. Even though you know we're out here at Del Mar, I'll be making a trip to Saratoga for the, for the Jim, Danny, and Travis, and I'm looking forward to it. But the great fields, great betting opportunities at Saratoga. It's unbelievable. No doubt, Simon. Now, let, let's start for the opening day card. Later in the card is going to be the Grade 3 Schuylerville. This race is wide open, and I'm looking for kind of a, a longer shot here, Simon. I'm looking at the number 8, Snowfire, for Mark Cassie, but so many chances of other horses that could win here. Where are you going to go in this race? I'm with you. I'm on the same horse, Snowfire. I like that. I think you've got to go with a price in there. I mean, you're talking about you know two-year-olds in a lively race, most of them one or two starts only. Uh, they're all coming off pretty much wins, except for Best Performance, who I thought actually was good in the Astoria. That's the three horse for Clement, and I think she's going to get better as the races get longer, so the extra 16th of a mile is going to help her. I look for her to, to rebound. I was impressed with her debut. Clement, not known for running two-year-olds this time of the year, usually waits a little bit, a little more patient. I think you'll get a good performance from the three, and I was impressed with Snowfire's win at Churchill, the horse who you mentioned by Tappet. Mark Cassie left through the combination, as we know, with Classic Empire earlier, earlier this year. So uh, I, I think, you know, you go for a price, and I like both the eight and the three. Simon, the grade three Lake George follows that race, and local trainer Chad Brown will start the number 155. He decided to skip the Belmont Oaks with this horse, even though he ran first, second, and third in that race with new money, honey. But Mark Cassie has three of his own in this race. Is it just these two trainers in this race, or where else should we be looking? I think so. I mean, I think you start with 55 for Chad Brown. Like it scratched out of the Belmont Oaks. She probably it was probably the right thing to do to come in favor of this spot. She ran behind New Money Honey Stablemate, of course, British Cup champion. So um, I think that's where you start. Sweeping Patty is an interesting horse for Dale Romans, coming off a win in the Regret at Churchill Downs. I liked her last two efforts. She's kind of improved since this winter at Gulfstream Park. You know, a lot of horses don't handle. Um, being down in South Florida, she was beaten a couple of times by Dream Dancing, but she's starting to improve, starting to turn the tables. She's four to one on the morning line. That price is a little bit short for me. I hope it'll drift up uh, somewhere around five, six to one. I think that's where she belongs. And then the, the horse I would look to, kind of an interesting outsider, is Party Boat for Graham Motion off that runner-up finish in the Pen Oaks last time. She's going to ra- uh, rally from off the pace. I think she'll appreciate uh, the pace that this close into here, Defiant Honor. The three has got some speed. Um, victory to victory is laid close on occasion. So I think it could set up for Party Boat to come from off the pace. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a patented Joe Rosario ride. He's back aboard. He's been aboard of her for two starts. So I look for the seven Party Boat to maybe give a slight upset in the uh, in the Lake George. Talking to TVG, Simon Bray. You can follow him on Twitter, at SimonTVG. All right, Simon, this weekend is the great one, Diana, and the feature horse running there, of course, the impressive filly for Chad Brown, Lady Eli. You saw her last time in the gamely at Santa Anita Park. Comes back for one of two for Chad Brown in that race. What exactly should we expect from Lady Eli in this in this race? I think you're going to expect, I mean, look, you get the same race from Lady Eli every time she runs. She's a filly that's not going to, to, to win and blow out her competition by three or four lengths. I mean, she did earlier in her career, but as the well-documented story, it's a miracle that she's even on the racetrack. She she suffered laminitis um, at the, in the middle of 2015, and she came back to the racetrack. And a lot of horses don't come back from that series of injury, let alone come back and win a great one. So 
she, she, she'll run a race, but I like the other brown. I was so impressed with Antonio and the just the game last time out of Belmont. I was there to see that, and she just exploded. I think they got to the last eighth of a mile in like 11, 11 and 3, something like that, which is very, very fast. Most, you know, if you're going sub-12 for the last eighth of a mile, last 220 yards as a race horse, you're really rolling home, and she was very, very impressive. Got that very, very sharp turn of foot. So I, I think Lady Eli, although she'll run her race, I think the stable mate could go one better than her, Antono. Yet again, it's Chap Brown's world, Brian, and we're just living in it, especially in the turf races. I see him running one, two here. It, indeed it is, Simon. And, and, you know, I know you're based out of Del Mar, and then you're going to be lucky enough this weekend. I'll be here at Saratoga, but you'll be at Del Mar, and you're going to witness the return of Arrowgate in the San Diego Handicap, his first race since his victory in Dubai and his clear prep race for the TVG Pacific Classic later in the meet. First off, is there any chance that he loses? And if if not, how can any of us betters make money in this race? It, it's an impossible race for him to lose. I mean, you should never say that anything could go wrong, but there's absolutely nothing. I've seen his, his last couple of works, and, and Baffert's done such a great job bringing him back. You know, I was there the day he I was one in Dubai, and then I was there at the barn the day he came back from Dubai, and he lost a little weight. Baffert kind of backed off him for a month or two and, and let him gain some weight, and he's had a series of seven works. Very, very impressive. They're going to treat this as a mile and the 16th workout on uh, on Saturday. Um, it's basically what Bob said, but uh, I, I just don't see him him getting beaten. And, and as far as who to pair up with him in the exact, it's only a six-horse field, but there's already rumors one or two might scratch, accelerate might scratch. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to play the race. Sometimes when you've got horses of this caliber, I think you just sit on your hands, appreciate the performance, and then move on to the next betting opportunity, I think. But I think you're going to see a real stellar performance uh, from him. I mean, it's just unbelievable what he's done in such a short period of time. And, you know, every horse that he beats comes back and, and just franks the form. Gun Runner, of course, who he beat in Dubai, came back and won the Stephen Foster, a Churchill grade one by seven lengths. So it's just, I mean, everybody else is helping his resume that's run behind him. Now, Simon, so, mean, you mentioned all of his great performances, and we, it's hard to believe that even at this point last year, you know, four weeks or, five, or six weeks from now when the Travers is run, that he was 10-1 to 1 in that field. Over the last, yep. you know, 10 months or so, do you think the Pegasus World Cup was one of his best, you know, races, or which one of those six or seven races would you say was his best? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think, I'm, no doubt, I think it's the Dubai World Cup um, by far for what, for what happened at the start. I mean, I was... Bob Baffert, you know, I was standing right next to him during the run as the horses went into the gate. And, you know, it's, it's, what happened at the gate was unbelievable. I, I think there was no assistant starter in there, and he kind of hesitated a little bit, missed the break. And then he got smashed by the Japanese horse leaving the gate and was so far back. And I looked over at Bob Baffert, didn't say anything, and he just shook his head and kind of said, why did I come here for this? And we'd all, you know, in the first 10, 15 seconds of the race, I'll just put it down to, well, it's not his day-to-day -day after what happened at the start. For him to overcome that, make a wide trip, and win, and win beating a very good horse in gun runner, who probably would have been at the top of the handicap division if it weren't for Arrogate, that, that to me is one of, the, one of the most impressive races I've seen in a long, long time in horse racing. All right, Simon, in the spirit of opening weekend here at Saratoga, I'm taking a poll throughout my office here and a lot of the horse racing guys that I talk to, and I'm going to have you in on it as well. So with the meet every year, we always talk about up here who will be the leading rider, the leading trainer. So I want to ask you, who do you believe will be the leading rider at the end of the meet? And, of course, the leading trainer seems to be between Chad Brown and Todd Pletcher. Yeah, I'll probably go with Chad for leading trainer just because of his depth in the turf races. Uh, and, he, you know, he's getting more and more dirt horses. The leading rider, I think that's, I don't know, that's going to be very, very tough. I'll probably go with one of the Ortiz brothers, maybe Jose, I would think, if he continues uh, his momentum that he had at Belmont. And I think Rosario, look, he doesn't ride probably quite the number of horses that Ortiz does, but I think he could be sitting on a big mate as well. I agree, Simon. Simon, I always appreciate your insight, man, and I can't wait to catch up with you when you and Todd come east uh, next weekend for the Jim Dandy. We appreciate your time, and, of course, maybe we'll catch up and grab some dinner or something next weekend. Absolutely. Sounds great, Brian. Thanks for having me, buddy.